In this video, we're talking about projector photography and I'm gonna give you everything you need to know to get started working with a projector. My name's Jesse, welcome back to my channel. Um, every six months or so, I decide to do a personal project, work with a material or a light source, something different than what I normally work with. I mainly shoot fitness photography and portraits. So using a projector is something that I normally wouldn't do, but I saw some posts on Instagram and I saw some things on Pinterest and I was kind of inspired and wanted to try it out for myself. Um, the reason I'm making this video is to share my experience and also maybe help you um, try something new and get creative and push yourself creatively because as artists and creatives, sometimes we get stuck in ruts. So the first thing that you're gonna need is a camera, obviously. The second thing is a projector. The projector, it was a little tricky. It took a lot of research to figure out which one was best for me and my needs. And I think this is something for you to think about too. If you're working in a really small space, the lower end or the most inexpensive projectors will probably be fine. The projectors kind of work like cameras. The lower the price, the less the image quality and the dimmer the light from the projector is. So then on the opposite, the higher the price, the higher the image quality. So you go all the way up to 4K, sometimes 8K, and then the projectors are super bright. They can throw an image, you know, the length of a movie theater. I mean, that's the probably the best projector you could get. So figuring out what, what your needs are or what you're gonna do with it. For me, I was gonna use my projector as a TV after the project was done. And, and also I wanted the image to be floor to ceiling about nine foot high, and then I wanted it to be about 12 foot wide. So what I ended up with was this projector right here, the Epson Home Cinema 880, and it cost about $600. So it was a little bit more expensive than say, going to buy a different filter for your camera and trying to work with uh, that type of material or something that's really inexpensive. So it was a little bit of an investment, but um, like I said, you could start at the really inexpensive one, see if that works for you, and then always you know, return it. I returned the first one that I bought. So two things to look out for just when you're selecting your projector, just make sure you look at the dimensions of the screen that it projects, make sure it fits your needs, the size of your wall or the size of the thing that you're projecting on. With projectors, you can always move it back and make the screen larger. And then you could also move it closer and make it smaller. The side effects of doing both things are when you move it back, you lose image quality. And then when you move it forward, you gain image quality, but you lose size. The other thing to look for is the brightness of the bulb. I really don't know the exact numbers to give you, but I did a lot of just comparing different models to see which one worked best and then also always read reviews. So once you've determined which projector that you need or think that would work for you, you'll need a way to connect it to your computer. I've seen people use iPads, I, I use my computer and you just need an HDMI cable. Luckily for me, I have the antique Mac and I have an HDMI port in mine. So I was able to just put the HDMI from my computer into the back of the projector. And then this is where the fun part comes in. You have to figure out what it is that you're gonna project onto your subjects. I just made a list of things that I'm into. And one thing on the list was abstract art. Another thing was patterns. And then the third thing was nature. So when I was pulling images from Google, I just looked up geometry, patterns, patterns in nature, colorful birds, colorful animals, and just kind of pick and choose the things that I thought would look cool. So I pulled all my images from Google and then I wanted to create some of my own in Photoshop. So I was going in the geometry lane and just put, made a circle, 
colored it orange. And then the cool thing about using Photoshop is you have complete control over the image. So if you don't like what the orange circle looks like or the white circle, you can always change the color and you can always change the size, which I thought was really neat. For cameras and camera settings, I was using an EOS R5 and I had three lenses. I had a 24 millimeter, a 50 and a 100. I found the 50 and the 100 to be the best based on where I had my projector placed. So if I was on my 24 and I wanted to get closer, I would end up being in front of the light source and then creating a shadow on the wall that kind of took away from the projection. So I, I found using the 50, I was able to stand far enough back where my shadow wasn't getting in the shot and then also, I would work around the subject and shoot at different angles. So I was able to be far enough back to shoot side angles. And the cool thing is with a three dimensional subject with a projection is you're getting the projecting, you're getting the colors and the shapes to wrap around the person. And then also working with the shadows that are cast on the wall. So the settings that I used were based on wanting the highlights to be just super high, super bright, and then the shadows or the dark colors to be almost black. Um, my ISO was 500. My shutter speed was 125th to 250th of a second. And then my, I, my aperture was 2.8 to F4. So I was actually really surprised with this. I thought that it was gonna be considered low light photography. I thought my ISO was gonna be a lot higher, but I think that's based on the brightness of my projector and the images that I pulled and was using. So I think play around with it. If you don't have a lens that goes down to 2.8, um, then you might have to bring your ISO up a little bit higher. Uh, if you're using an iPhone, it's totally fine. It comes with the 26 millimeter lens, so just be cautious of the shadows. Also, take your iPhone out of HDR mode. I feel like it makes it all just kind of flat. It doesn't give you that dimension or just the high contrast, unless that's what you're going for. But um, I think it looks best out of HDR. And then also take advantage of the manual override of your exposure. And there you go. Projector photography, I found to be a lot of fun. In wrapping this up, I ended up doing five different photo shoots for my project. And then I posted some of my results on Instagram and ended up getting a couple commissioned projector shoots. So the project ended up paying for itself or at least the equipment that I invested in or purchased to create this work. You know, I think that's one of the cool things about doing personal projects is you're showing people a different side of you that they haven't seen before. You have it in your head, might as well put it out there into the world by creating it and pushing yourself as a creative, as an artist. So that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you learned something. I hope I inspired you to try something new. Go ahead and hit the like button if you like this video. If you wanna see some more videos on photography, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video.